One of the most significant contributors to the early development of psychology is Sigmund Freud. This is because of his groundbreaking theories on the unconscious mind. This is to say the effects on our behavior and mental processing that derive from influence beyond our conscious awareness. Throughout his life's work, he focused on his psychoanalytic theory, which was later followed by other researchers in the psychodynamic approach of the unconscious mind. So to clarify, the psychoana psychoanalytic approach, which was uh, championed by Freud, focuses on unconscious internal conflicts to explain mental dis uh, disorders, personality, and motivation. One of these theories is the Oedipus complex that was developed by Freud. And this is, uh, derives, Freud derived this from the uh, Greek mythological tale of Oedipus, who unknowingly killed his father and married his mother. Freud argues that um, men, not all men, but uh, quite a few men, have their personality and behavior guided or s directed by this unconscious desire to kill their father and marry their mother. But is that literally what they're trying to do? No. What they're really subconsciously or unconsciously trying to do is take over the role of the father, become the leader, be the patriarch, and then to find a woman that is similar uh, to the mother, uh, someone who's uh, caring and nurturing. Um, the psychodynamic approach, conversely, um, focuses on those that varied Freud's ideas but kept with the roots of psychoanalysis. So these people like Carl Jung, Karen Horney, who we'll discuss later in the year, um, they, they also believe that our behavior and personality is steered by our unconscious drives and desires. However, they put less emphasis on sex and aggression, which is what Freud heavily emphasized, as we'll learn later in the year. The humanistic approach to psychology emphasize, uh, places emphasis on the importance of people's feelings and view human nature as naturally positive and growth-seeking. Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers are two humanist uh, psychologists who we'll be learning, uh, learning about throughout the year. Abraham Maslow is accredited with developing the hierarchy of needs, and Carl Rogers developed uncon unconditional positive regard uh, as well as uh, active listening and therapies. This approach came out in the 60s and 70s, so you can kind of see the hippie influence, maybe. Um, make sure uh, to note that humanist approach emphasizes living up to your fullest potential, and we will explore this throughout the year. The biological approach examines how complex chemical and biological processes within the nervous system and endocrine systems are related to the behavior of organisms. Much research is being done today using this approach. It's, bra it's brain-based research. Um, we are going to discuss this and uh, go over all of this in Unit 3, which is neuroscience. It's my personal favorite unit, unit, so get ready. The cognitive approach emphasizes the importance of receiving, storing, and processing information. That is, that's what cognition is. Cognition is mental processing. Okay, receiving information from your environment, storing that information in your brain, and then processing that information, maybe even using that information on a test. Um, let's say the AP exam, for example. Uh, cognitive cognition is mental processing. It also focuses on thinking, reasoning, and using language to understand human behavior. The evolutionary approach <clears throat> attempts to explain behavior patterns as adaptions naturally selected to increase reproductive success. This approach uses Darwin's theory of natural selection as a basis, which we discussed earlier. Yeah, we also mentioned the origin of species earlier. Does anyone recognize this man? We'll talk about him in class. The sociocultural approach to psychology, what we also call social psychology, um, examines the cultural differences in an attempt to understand, predict, and control human behavior. As time progressed, more people were traveling and visiting other cultures, so I, especially considered today in this global economy that we now live in. It's very important to understand other people's cultural norms <clears throat> and what sets us apart. Psychologists soon recognized the differences in cultural gestures, body language, and spoken language, which is why social psychology has become a separate uh, approach in and of itself. And some of you may have heard of sociology, which is a completely different field of science, separate from psychology, because there are so many variables 
um, involved with social interactions and uh, opposing cultures. The most widely used psychological approach today, however, is the eclectic approach, all right? Because not one single approach gives us a universal understanding, um, it's good to use all of the approaches uh, in, at once, for example. So the eclectic approach is where no one perspective can best explain all human behavior. So we use a variety of approaches. This most often, more often than not, is referred to as the biopsychosocial approach, which is a general model of approaching, uh, or excuse me, it's a general model of biological, psychological, and social factors that play a significant role in the human functioning. So biological factors, uh, being tired, being hungry, psychological factors, being out, outgoing or being more introverted, and social uh, environmental factors like socioeconomic status can all impact our personality and our behavior. Other innovators to very briefly take note of uh, is one is Herman Ebbinghaus, who's pictured here. We're going to be studying him more in Unit 9, uh, which is memory. He did the first experiment, experiments on memory uh, where he used meaning, meaningless lists of information to memorize. Uh, from these experiments, he developed the forgetting curve, which states that as long as you continue to reinforce information, uh, you will gradually be able to retain more and more information over a time, certain time period. And then the spacing effect states that if you space out your studying, you're more likely to remember uh, for a longer period of time, as opposed to cramming the night before a test, you're not going to retain that information as long uh, as you would if you had spaced out your study. Another uh, important thinker is E.L. Thorndike, who's pictured here. Um, he's significant because he uh, performed the first experiments on animals, such as rats and mice, and, and he also developed the law of effect, which states that any Posi any behavior that elicits a positive consequence will will most likely persist. So if I contribute to class discussion and my teacher gives me a piece of candy, I'm going to continue to contribute to class discussion so I can keep getting candy. This uh, law of effect was used by B.F. Skinner to develop operant conditioning, which we'll discuss in uh, Unit 7, Learning. Uh, another early thinker is Alfred Binet. Uh, he did, developed the uh, first intelligence test that we now know today as the Stanford Binet Intelligence Test. Um, what he was really doing is trying to figure, uh, trying to come up with an assessment tool like the SAT to determine which French students could be admitted into higher education. And again, we'll discuss him more in uh, in a later unit. Another is Ivan Pavlov. That he's going to be in Unit Seven, Learning. Um, he studied animal learning, uh, specifically dogs. And he developed classical conditioning, uh, which we will discuss in Unit 7. Or in class, ask me about it. We'll talk about it. And then John B. Watson from the United States uh, thought that the only thing to be studied was an organism's behavior. And he is the founder of the school of behaviorism that we discussed earlier. And then last but certainly not least are the, early, uh, the women of early psychology. Um, here we have Mary Calkins. She was the very first female of the American Psychological Association. She was the first president female, or first female president of the American Psychological Association. She was working on her doctorate at Harvard. Um, however, because she is a woman, she was denied. And so because of that, Margaret Floyd Washburn became the very first woman to receive her PhD in psychology from Harvard University. Well, this concludes Unit 1A.2 and the early perspectives and development of the scientific study of psychology. Next unit, um, we will wrap up Unit 1 and continue on to our first major uh, unit of the year, which is social psychology.